The way that human beings interpret the reality around them is via patterns. What we term today knowledge and understanding is simply pattern apprehension. Everything that we consider to be true is simply something that we have distinguished as a pattern. If I drop something, I know that it's going to fall every time. Someone saw that and realized that, hey, that's a pattern. And if you take an object and throw it, there is a path that it follows each time. There is some sort of way that it behaves that occurs each time, which we call trajectory. Everything that you see is a pattern. Everything that you consider to be true and real are patterns. This goes from the laws of physics to the clothes on your body, that you are the result of a bunch of patterns acting out from your heartbeat to your breathing to the life cycle of your cells. Cycle implies pattern. Even the, the atoms that are vibrating within your body right now, they are vibrating in a pattern. And at the end of all of these various conjunctions of patterns, there's you. Reality is comprised of this infinitely dense interconcatenating assortment of patterns. And for whatever reason, what the human being is able to do, it is able to perceive and understand these various patterns. We are able to distinguish patterns from each other. But not all patterns. We are nowhere near being able to perceive the totality of the patterns that make up reality. And this is the idea that I want to explore. Many of the things that I'm going to say are going to sound far out. But I assure you, I am not schizophrenic. I'm going to thread together some ideas dealing with consciousness frequency, dimensions. I know as I list them off, it's easy to put me in some sort of box, but the way that I'm going to merge them all together, by the end of this video, you will at least have heard things from a different perspective. So as I was saying, reality is comprised of all sorts of various patterns. Reality is the expression of patterns. Even the way that we today measure intelligence is by your ability to apprehend patterns. If you have ever taken any sort of IQ exam or some sort of assessment to your cognitive ability, that is what it is comprised of. All of the questions deal with your ability to point out and discern patterns. You'll see a list of objects and they'll ask you what's next. They'll ask you what number fits inside of this other group of numbers. The only way you can accurately answer the question is by being able to perceive some specific pattern. Perhaps all of the all of the numbers are odd. Maybe they are the square root of some other number, etc. This isn't anything new. This isn't groundbreaking science. It is common knowledge that pattern recognition is at the core of how human beings interpret reality. But have you ever really asked yourself, well, what exactly is a pattern then? It's rather simple. A pattern is any instance that consistently repeats. But if you look at it from this perspective, what does that say about reality itself exactly? That anything that consistently repeats, the measurement of anything that consistently repeats in any given amount of time is called a frequency. Another somewhat synonymous term with this is cycle, but cycle and frequency are more or less synonymous. It's just a different style of language to measure the same 
phenomena of how often something repeats. So if you look at it this way, reality is reality. It is comprised up of all of these various patterns that have various frequencies or various cycles. And the human, the human being, for whatever reason, we are able to interpret some of these patterns, some of these cycles. Some of them are rather obvious and undeniable. Others might take a, a little more work to be able to perceive. But no matter which way you flip it, whenever we come in contact with many of these patterns, they imprint onto us. We are able to cognize them and see that they are. When you really think about it, this is the way an antenna works, that you have all of this energy, all of these various frequencies, and it is able to pick up on some of them and trans translate this fr this frequency into some sort of usable information this is what we do as human beings with reality but the catch here is if you look at the antenna metaphor that antennas don't pick up on all of the energy bombarding it there are a certain range of frequencies that it is able to actually interpret and the rest of these frequencies, all of the frequencies that are outside of its range, it just appears as some sort of static. These out of range frequencies are what I will talk about next. That to us, these out of range frequencies, this static, it appears to us as infinite complexity. What infinite complexity looks like is what we all commonly term today as chaos. This whole idea of chaos is rather interesting that if, as I've previously stated, reality is comprised of patterns. Patterns is anything that consistently repeats. Anything that consistently repeats fundamentally makes it predictable. There is predictability embedded in what a pattern is. And on the other end of this, you have what we colloquially term today as chaos. Chaos is unpredictability. I know that there is a mathematical definition and a more academic term, but I'm speaking to the common man here, that on one end you have pattern. And on the other end, you have unpatterned. On one end, you have predictable. And on the other end, you have unpredictable. And what lies in the middle of these two poles is a sliding scale of complexity. This term complexity is more of a judgment call on how difficult something is to be perceived as a pattern. This is a judgment call that varies from person to person, perceiver to perceiver. This is why we would all score differently on the IQ assessment. There are patterns that are simple for you to see that perhaps I cannot see. It's rather complicated for me. And on this scale, on the pattern end, on the on the furthest end of this scale, you have patterns that are, we agree, that are undeniable. These are the so-called truths. And on the other end of chaos and unpredictability, unpatterned, you have forms that no one can apprehend. Infinite complexity is some form of chaos. You may have heard me say before on this channel, it's something that I always say that reality is infinitely complex. What I'm ultimately saying is there will be a threshold to that you reach that everything will appear chaotic. And this is the key word here that it appears to be chaotic and complexity and chaos is actually more of a judgment call. It is a lack of ability of the perceiver to see and not the actual real state of things. Along the lines of the more academic way of viewing this, there is a lot of research that goes into chaotic systems. And you will see a 
large sentiment and a large a large group of people who argue that these systems are not unpredictable. It is just it is just that the math to actually to rein them in and to make them to be able to be perceived as a pattern, the math is just too astronomical. Even with quantum computing, no matter how we try and slice it, it is just too much. We cannot even solve chess. You know, chess is this simple game with these locked fixed rules and pieces. And there are so many possibilities, so many different ways the game can be played. We just can't calculate it. The math is too astronomical. In other words, just because we are not able to perceive the pattern there, that doesn't mean that there isn't There isn't one, and it is more of a deficit or inability of the perceiver and not the phenomenon itself. Or as the kids say today, skill issue. It's kind of, you know, going back to the antenna metaphor that there are there is a range of frequencies that it is able to deal with. But the ones that lie outside of that It doesn't mean that they aren't there. It just doesn't register to it. It doesn't, quote unquote, perceive them. I was watching a video of how chaos is represented via the pendulum. And it was uh, some sort of Instagram reel. It was a live demonstration of pretty much how chaos works. But then something funny happened. The video repeated And on the second repetition of the video, I realized that now this this once chaotic, unpredictable event is now suddenly completely predictable. It is now a pattern. And amongst the study of these chaotic systems, there is this idea that if you could somehow rewind the hands of time to the beginning, if you pressed play again, would everything play out exactly the same? This is a thought experiment that's rather impossible for us to carry out because we live within this third dimension and we cannot escape this experience of time. Or essentially for us, everything happens for the first time the first time and there is no undoing that. However, it does suggest that chaos is time dependent and it really got me thinking. And the more that I talk, the more far out things are going to sound. But if you approach things from the perspective of there are these various dimensions, the way that I define dimensions is any lens through which reality can be interpreted. This is just my own semantical take on it. I believe that the lens through which reality can be perceived, the amount of them are infinite or at least seemingly infinite because I believe that reality is infinitely complex or you could view it this way. Reality is infinitely complex. So how many different ways can you plug into it? How many different ways can it be perceived for us perceivers, us 3D perceivers, human beings, at least we have five main ways. We have our five senses, smell, touch, sight, uh, sound, and taste. To me, each of these represent some sort of different dimension. They are a unique a unique avenue through which reality can be perceived. There are more. I believe that there are an infinite amount of these. I believe that the the six main questions that we are able to ask, uh, who, what, when, where, why, and how, I think each of those represents its own dimension. Because when you really think about it, there's only about six different questions we can ask or six different domains of questioning. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. And we combine all of these various domains, you know, the five senses, these this ability to question. We combine all of these in various ways and 
we are able to perceive all sorts of patterns as a result of it. However, if you think that reality is so simple that via six domains of questioning, six lines of questioning that you will be able to perceive it in its totality, I've got a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. And that these restrictions are pretty much our bandwidth as an animal. This is the range of frequency that we are able to perceive as entities. And anything outside of this just appears as chaotic to us. But going along with the more academic way dimensions are viewed, that I I forget how many exactly, perhaps it's up to 11 or something, but the fourth dimension is widely perceived as or agreed upon to be this dimension of time. This isn't friend science. This isn't far out thinking. This is just widely accepted within academia. And it got me thinking that, for example, when I was watching this chaotic system play out, the double hinged pendulum, how would this appear to an observer within the fourth dimension. This chaotic system, this thing that we cannot see as pattern, for all intents and purposes, it appears to us as static. It is outside of our ability to apprehend it as a frequency. How would this appear to a perceiver within this fourth dimension of time? What I actually believe is, It would appear to it as some sort of pattern or more accurately, some sort of object. This is where things get rather wonky. Reality is comprised of all of these infinitely dense overlapping patterns and they are emitting all of these various frequencies and the range of frequencies that you are able to interpret from reality is where you intersect with reality. We are conscious beings that intersect with reality in the third dimension. We are 3D perceivers. We exist. We perceive things as matter. This is the world of the material. But just because this is where we intersect with reality, That is not an indicator of what reality actually is. And this 3D perception, this material world that we are perceiving, we are digging and finding out that it's not exactly material at all, but rather it is comprised up of all of these various patterns. It is some sort of energy that is behaving in a way And at the end of this behavior, we have these material, these things that we perceive at least as material objects that the pants you are wearing is actually vibrating energy. It is some sort of energy field that is acting out in a pattern and we are able to intersect with this pattern at this level, the third dimension, and we perceive it as being material. And when we try to perceive past this material intersection, this is to say that as we try and see what exactly are these material objects, these things that we thought were tiny little particles, when we try and see what's inside of them, things start to not work. Things start to act wonky and the smaller and more the more in depth that we try and perceive you start to run into things like chaos this is when chaos begins to enter the picture it is almost like we are trying to tune our radio to a frequency that it just doesn't mesh with it is outside of its range and as a result all we keep getting is static on the line But within this fourth dimension, if you have something like this chaotic system or if you have this pendulum going, to us it is chaotic, it is static. But to it, it would appear as a pattern because chaos is 
it is time dependent and to it, it would appear as some sort of object the same way that you appear as an object to me. But in actuality, you are just vibrating energy that I cannot perceive. I don't see you as a bunch of vibrating energy. I see you as you, an object, a person in front of me. Within the fourth dimension, this chaotic pendulum would appear to it as some sort of object, some sort of particle, some sort of thing, and not just this thing flailing around as it does to us. And perceivers within the fourth dimension, they would see a whole host of different patterns that we are not able to. To a fourth dimensional perceiver, your life would appear as a thing. It wouldn't be this this continual process that it's experiencing. It would see you at 30 and at the same time it could see you as at 60. You would appear as some sort of object. It obviously it's impossible for me to try and imagine what that's like, but I'm trying to walk you to a a different mode of thinking. So keep everything that I've said thus far in mind as I make my final caveat that reality is comprised up of different levels of patterns. What chaos is, it is a range of patterns that we are not able to perceive within this third dimension. And in order for you to perceive different ranges of patterns, you would have to have a different perspective. The only way you can get this perspective is via some sort of different dimension, some sort of 4D perspective, 2D perspective, etc. Each dimension is host to its own range of perspectives. So now this is where things get a lot more metaphysical. In my previous video titled, Is Spirituality and Schizophrenia Linked?, I talked a lot about the idea of singularities. In that video, I talked a lot about how they operate, but I didn't really discuss what I believe they actually are. I do this in a video titled, What is a Singularity? But I'll reiterate it here. I believe that a singularity, at least the metaphysical one, I'm no cosmologist, I'm no astrophysicist, so I won't talk about the actual black holes, you know, this whole cosmological phenomenon. But at least these metaphysical singularities, these concepts and ideas that just seem to break our brain, I term it the realm of forbidden thought. Many of these ideas lead to some sort of metaphysical singularity. For example, uh, the, the whole concept of infinity, uh, nothingness, what is bigger than the biggest thing, what contains all of these things that push, push us beyond our own ability to comprehend them. They wind up leading to some sort of singularity, some sort of absurd position to where things just start to break down and come together at the same time and nothing makes sense anymore. They just hurt your brain to even try and think about what I actually believe these things are. With, we are locked into the perspective of the third dimension. And within the third dimension, any attempts to perceive deeply into something wind up as a singularity. We have within the third dimension what is called a vanishing point. What I believe this vanishing point, this singularity, it is simply a point, a position that we cannot see behind. It is a point that we cannot see through. It's kind of like if I showed you the, the, the single point perspective within art, that everything would extend out into this vanishing point and that's where your perception ends. You just cannot perceive past that tiny little dot way out there in this figurative distance. This is all a singularity is. It is 
the unknown, the unknown that we just are not allowed to know. And someone left an interesting comment on that video and said that usually when you encounter singularities within mathematics, you are using a incorrect coordinate system. And this pretty much rings home to the point that I'm making. I believe that singularities are the end of our perception, or in other words, they are some sort of transitioning point to some other dimension. Perhaps in mathematics, as the commenter said, you just switch to a different coordinate system. You introduce some other plane or some other domain so that this singularity goes away and you can continue on with your work or whatever you're trying to accomplish. That's the beauty of mathematics, that you can just do things like that. It's kind of like within physics, you know, Every, all of this 3D stuff, it's all governed by, you know, Newtonian physics. And Newtonian physics has its own set of rules and logic. And eventually, once you get down to this quantum level of physics, they just pretty much switch logics and it it supposedly works out. But within this this world of mathematics, you can sort of switch domains, switch logic, switch perspectives to accommodate whatever ends you're trying to do. But within this material reality, within our consciousness, we reach the, the limits of our perception. And the limits of our perception always manifests as some sort of singularity. And pretty much what I'm saying is, in order to see past this singularity, you would have to have a different way of perceiving reality. You would have to step off into some other dimension. And I hope you're able to follow me and understand what I'm saying here. If you have any questions or just want to call me crazy, comment and let me know so I can see how I can better elaborate on these things. But where this all gets even crazier and even wacky and perhaps a bit schizo is, I think that this is what our consciousness is. If you want to use the Freudian metaphor of the iceberg that we have this conscious mind, this thing that is talking to you right now, me, which is the vast minority of consciousness. And then underneath you have the subconscious or the unconscious mind, however you choose to describe it. And for whatever reason, this conscious mind, whenever there is any sort of attempt to take this conscious mind into the subconscious, you reach one of these sorts of singularities as well. The conscious mind, the 10% of the iceberg that is poking up above the water within this Freudian iceberg metaphor, it exists within some sort of 3D space, some sort of 3D experience. And any attempts, whenever you try and take this conscious mind and explore its bottom half, what lies beneath it, the subconscious, it gets very wacky and wonky. And perhaps you can even get sucked in and lost down there. And I talk about this ad nauseum in many of my previous videos. So check out my catalog. As I mentioned in my previous video about schizophrenia, this is what I believe schizophrenia is. It is people who perhaps they got a bit too close to this singularity and got sucked in some kind of way. Ultimately, what I'm saying is mind, this consciousness that we have, not just the 10% that's poking up above the, the water and the metaphor, but the entirety of the iceberg, what consciousness is, I believe it is from some other dimension. I know it sounds crazy to say, but this mind that we have is something out of this world. I think it has to be coming from some other dimension, and I know it really sounds crazy to say, but this is, it meshes with all of the themes that I've been exploring. When you look at the Christianity creation myth that something, some higher intellect, some higher being, force, Tao, I don't know what to call it, something 
came into a relationship with the human being. For whatever reason, the human being was called out amongst all of the our other animal family. They all pretty much operate on this same range of frequencies. But the human being was called out and we have this mind. And this mind is kind of being birthed through us. We are like the womb that this mind is passing through. I, I look at it as the entirety of the iceberg was submerged beneath the, the surface of the water. And for whatever reason, I believe this is encapsulated within the Christianity, the Christian creation myth of, of the eating of the fruit of knowledge, of knowledge of good and evil. You see, before they ate the fruit, they were in some sort of state of oneness, some sort of state of non-differentiation. And when they ate this fruit, it, it said that their eyes were opened. They gained the knowledge of good and evil. Dualism was born. Or in other words, they were able to differentiate patterns. They were able to see patterns all around them. That began the emergence of this mind, this soul. I think that whatever it is, we are sort of like the womb that it is birthing through. And eventually, I don't know when this will be, but I think it will completely enter into this dimension. It will completely be it will completely manifest and become real. I, I term it as the imagination will become real. The unconscious will become completely conscious. There will be some sort of pure consciousness. And I believe that we are in some sort of important component of this birthing process of the mind. I don't think that it will happen directly through us, but it has started with us and it is facilitating its own birth in some sort of way. And it will pass through us and the human being will one day have to submit to something else. I guess that's like a long winded way of saying that some sort of extra dimensional entity is entering into our dimension via us. And I believe that what our consciousness is, the reason why we keep hitting this singularity within our own mind is because it is a stepping off point into some other greater mode of being, some other greater perspective. And it is permeating our world, permeating this dimension via us, these apes, these animals. And I know it sounds crazy to describe it this way using this sort of new age style language, but this is pretty much what many theologies say that there is some sort of divine force, some sort of supreme entity that lives within all of us that we are to do its bidding until it facilitates whatever ends it wants and brings about some new kingdom. I'm pretty much saying the same thing, but I don't know what to call it. It is something I always say that the closest analogy we have for it is some sort of birth that ultimately this will all end up some sort of way. It is all going somewhere and something bigger than us is using us and passing through us. I don't know if this is a good or bad thing. I have no clue. I'm not making any judgment calls. Perhaps the eating of the fruit was not a part of the plan. And this thing that's being born through us is some sort of antichrist demonic. I have no idea. But whatever it is, the way that things appear to be going, it's coming one day, perhaps a hundred thousand years from now. I have no clue, but... This is all going somewhere and we are simply here to witness it, to go along for the ride. So I'm going to, this is probably my longest video yet. I'm going to leave it here. Like, comment, and subscribe. Um, 
I have a locals page. I just posted a video there. It was kind of similar to this one. So if you want to hear more thoughts on this type of thing, go ahead and check it out. You can also make donations. I'd like to thank uh, someone. I believe the name was Makila. She donated to the channel. I like to, uh, I appreciate that. And I also have a loyal subscriber over there. His name is Grant. So I'd like to thank you as well. And until next time, y'all have a blessed day.